Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. The title of today's episode is, Forget Not All His Benefits. The scripture verse is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This verse has a lot to it. First, it's talking about praise, which is similar to yesterday's verse. This verse is not just saying, praise the Lord. It's saying, praise the Lord with your soul. Praise the Lord with your inmost being. Have you ever praised like that before? Have you ever been singing along with a song, or even just listening to it, and you felt that song with your inmost soul? I have a few songs on my playlist like that. Actually, we sang one of these songs at my class last Monday night. It's called Raise a Hallelujah by Bethel Music. If you haven't heard that song, I recommend you look it up. It's such a great song. At class, that song got everyone up to their feet singing along at the top of their lungs. It was so good. After this verse, it says, And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I think it might be good to look at each of these separately. The first thing it mentioned is that God forgives all your sin. It doesn't say some of your sins. It doesn't say everyone else's sins, but not yours. It says he forgives all your sins. Do you believe this? Do you believe that the Lord loves you so much he forgives your sins? Many of us will quickly say, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We know this, and yet when you look at how we're living our lives, you wouldn't be able to tell that we know this. Some of us hold on to our sins, and we wear them like a scarlet letter. We don't let people close to us, because if they knew who we really were or what we had done, they wouldn't be our friends anymore. We tell all those that will listen how Jesus died for our sins, and about how God loves them no matter what they have done. We tell them their behavior doesn't make God love them any more or any less than he already does. We tell others it's never too late for them to turn back to the Lord and repent. We tell them this, and the whole time we are telling them this, we are holding on to our sins, and we are holding on to the belief that God couldn't possibly love us because of the things we have done. If you are good at telling others about God's forgiveness and not great about accepting it into your life, I want to encourage you to hear God's word in this verse right now. He forgives all your sins. Yes, even that one you have been trying to hide from him. Yes, even that one you know for sure he couldn't possibly forgive. He forgives all of your sins. All we need to do is trust that and be brave enough to bring our sins to him, confess them, and repent. He is so eager for each one of us to turn back to him. He is waiting with open arms. He heals all your diseases. Is this something you believe? This one is sometimes harder for me. I mean, I know he can heal all diseases. And at the same time, I know people who have died of diseases and so it's a harder one for me to understand. 
I know for sure he heals all diseases when we die and go to heaven. When we get to heaven, there will be no disease. I'm not sure why he doesn't heal all diseases this side of heaven. I don't understand why some people get to live and some don't. In my eyes, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Every time I try to understand, or I try to apply some sort of human logic to it, the Holy Spirit points me to Isaiah chapter 55, verses 18 to 19. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We are not meant to understand everything this side of heaven. Even though I know a lot of people who have died from diseases, I also have heard a lot of testimony of people who have been healed here on earth and get to live the rest of their lives disease-free. I watched the Fearless documentary the other night with Tony. This documentary explores what it means to live our Catholic faith in a fearless way. I know not everyone listening is Catholic, and I love that. I still think you should watch the documentary. It's such a powerful testimony of the power of stepping out in faith. There is video footage from healing services, and it's incredible to see how many people were healed and how they were healed. There was a man that came to a service in a wheelchair. He hadn't walked in seven years. He was up and walking that night. Praise God. He is so good. God is healing people today, even in this day and age, and he's doing it through ordinary people like you and me. The next part says, Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. This one may be another one that's hard to believe. God can redeem your life from the pit. Is this something you can believe? This may be harder to believe if you are in a pit right now. When you are in a pit, you don't usually feel much love or compassion. You don't usually feel much of anything. You certainly don't think God will redeem what you're going through, as all you can see is darkness around you. This is one where you might have to keep telling yourself it while you are in the pit. It might be one that you don't necessarily believe, but something you hope for. If you are in a pit right now, picture God lifting you out of it, putting a crown on your head and filling you with love and compassion. This may be more difficult if all you see is darkness. Try anyway. God will redeem your life from this pit. He says so right here in this verse. God has not abandoned you, nor will he ever abandon you. If this is what you are hearing, it's a lie from the enemy. If this is what you are hearing on a daily basis, then write this part of the verse down and read it every time you get the thought that you are alone or that God has abandoned you. God will crown you with love and compassion. Remember that. The last thing the verse says is, Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The last thing the verse says is, Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Another amazing thing about God is that He doesn't just give you what you need to survive. He makes sure you have that, and then He goes above and beyond that. He satisfies our desires with good things. Do you believe this? Is this something you have gotten to witness? Have you ever asked God? Have you ever asked the Lord for something and then received something so much better than you asked for? Sometimes God likes to show off, and I love it. The other day, God miraculously fixed the water at my friend's parents' house. He could have arranged to have a plumber come or someone to look at the well, but instead... He decided to miraculously fix it. Another friend was praying she would have enough food at a celebration she was having. She ended up having way more food than she needed. Praise God. He is so good. I heard something on the Big Life podcast the other day, and I've started saying it a lot. I really like it. When I notice something that God did, when I see something God created, or when God answers a prayer, 
I say, thank you, God. I love it. The next time you notice something God did for you or something he created for the whole world, like a beautiful sunset, say, thank you, God. I love it. And see if you feel anything differently about it. And see if you feel any differently about it. I can't say that without smiling and filling up with joy. That is a super short way to praise God, and yet it gets the praise to Him. This verse started talking out about praise, and I just realized I'm ending it talking about praise. I didn't mean to do that, and yet I'm sure the Holy Spirit did, because praising God is just that important. What can you praise God for today? How many times today can you say, Thank you, God. I love it. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all those listening to this episode today. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. We ask you to help us to believe all those things listed above that we're struggling to believe. We ask you to help us come to an understanding about the things we don't understand. If it's something we aren't meant to understand, help us see that too, Lord. We pray for those who are in a pit right now. We pray you show them how much you love them and that you lift them out of that pit and you crown them with love and compassion. Lord, we pray for all those suffering with a disease right now. We pray you heal their disease. We pray that all we pray for all those who need forgiveness. We pray that you open their hearts and help them accept your forgiveness. Lord, we love you, and we are so grateful you do so much for us. You truly are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You are the Father of forgiveness, and we are so grateful. We ask all of this in accordance with your will, and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey to walk boldly with Jesus. In case you didn't hear yesterday, my book is finally out in the world. It's called Total Trust in God's Safe Embrace. It's available on Amazon. I hope you'll take a look at it and share it with your friends. I will put a link in the show notes. Thank you all for your support. I look forward to bringing you another witness tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day.